bands which have connected them with one another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect for the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to be separate to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for life or transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object of is designed to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time, after such dissolutions, to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers, incapable of annihilation, have returned to the people at large for their exercise. For quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial and punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with the circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured in them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and contiguity. We call you now to the Liberty Tree. It is time you have heard, and what you have heard in particular are the charges. Who were those charges against? They were against the king, not parliament, but the king. And do you know why? Because we were a covenant people. And I thank you, and I'm glad that you were able to participate and hear this great reading of our wonderful Declaration of Independence. to be here in Twinsburg to celebrate the, our independence. This is such a great day and you think of all the people here who really had to work hard in, back in 1776 to make all this happen. It's important that we celebrate it each and every 4th of July. Independence this year is really up. It's great. People are really into what's going on in the country. The Declaration of Independence is a, is a great document and it's as relevant today as it was 200 some years ago when it was written. Maybe even more so today.